So here, my name is Sarah, as you can see. I'm from Bangkok, Thailand. I've been an English facilitator for a very long time. I teach IELTS to a lot of Thai students and French students, and they've scored very high on it as well. So I'm here to teach you how to write. Let's go to the first presentation. Overview of writing section. It's 60 minutes. General, general writing section, the task one is 150 words, 20 minutes. Task two, 250 words, essay, 40 minutes. This is for general. This general writing section is used for those who wants to go overseas and work, not to study. For those who wants to work. So if you're giving like, um, or uh, we said, one, you wanna go to Canada, you wanna go to Australia, you'll probably be doing the general writing section to see your level of competencies and to see how well you can relate to the English language. In the second one, we have the academic writing section, which is 150 words, data analysis, 20 minutes, 250 words, essay, 40 minutes. So far, are you with me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Next, general writing tips. Task one, read. Always make sure you read the prompt carefully, questioning WHO. WHO is what and how. Okay, so this is very important and many, many people tend to overlook this because they think they know English pretty well. But sometimes the, the, what they're asking you is hidden in the sentence itself. So you have to read carefully, even as an English speaker or even as an instructor, I do need to read and that's important. Number two, understand, understand who are you addressing? When I asked you to do the task just now, I was seeing if you could address me correctly. I wanted to see what are you writing about? And I wanted to make sure you cover all three points or all points in your letter. Of course, we didn't go this far. I was just seeing if you could address me well. Then how, how do you start and end the letter? what expressions and language to use. Spend about five minutes to sketch your ideas and plan your writing. This five minute is crucial for you. Why? Because it allows your thoughts to come all over on the paper and organize it well. This stage is extremely important. If you have a clear idea of the above points, then you won't feel stuck or press for time. Many people, even my own students, they tend to overlook this and I get really upset when they do that. So please, this is for general writing, but it also applies to academic writing. Are you with me so far? Yes. Yes. Okay. So did you see when I asked you to write, did you address me well? Did you complete your sentence well? Look at it yourself and see. Think about just one sentence you wrote to me. Did it make any sense to you? Okay, let's move on. Use mind maps or bullet points to think of appropriate vocabulary to use. Try to use synonyms to show your variety of vocabulary. I'm not gonna read everything because it's written very clearly and you can see it. Can you see it clearly? Is it visible to you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. So now, even when we speak, how many times do we repeat the word and? How many times do you re repeat the word because? So these repeated words and because or some vocabulary, you know, I don't know, and you know, all these repetition words shows that you are stuck. You do not have the right vocabulary. So try to use, even in your daily spoken English, try to not to repeat too many words and try to use a variety of vocabulary. Trust me, 
Indians are pretty good in this. They're very good, in fact. They have a lot of good vocabulary and you can use them. It's just that you're scared to use it maybe. Let's move on. Number four, write your answer for about 10 minutes and try not to stop. So what happens here? Now that you have the plan for five minutes that you have already written out earlier, you should be able to write 10 minutes without stopping. Again, I repeat here, do not repeat words like and or because too much. Only 150 words, it's not that many words. You should be able to give me an introduction, a body and a conclusion. Don't make a mistake by not including the conclusion or skipping out on the intro introduction and just writing the body and conclusion. It doesn't work. You lose points on that. Number five, make sure you leave five minutes to read what you have written and correct any mistakes that you spot. Now, I'm gonna tell you something about spelling and vocabulary. The trick is this, if you can't spell the word, drop it. Use something you know how to spell and use a vocabulary that is similar and it's easy for you to understand. Why? Because when you write, if, if you know the words, you'll be able to write the sentence correctly and you'll be able to keep it short and simple. This is the KISS rule, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it short and simple. And this goes for email writing. I have been teaching this to a lot of presidents and a lot of, um, you know, um, big, big organizations, you know, like CEOs and all. And you know what? They don't know how to keep it short and simple. So the meetings go long and very boring. I don't think you want that, do you? Do you? Hello? No, ma'am. Come on, speak to me. No, <laughs> Speak to me. Okay, don't be shy. Speak to me. Use this time to speak. If you're shy to speak English, here I am with you. So use me. So far, are you okay? Do you have any questions so far before I start academic writing? Or you can keep it for later. Can I go on? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Next, academic writing one. What is the objective of this task here? How do they grade you on the task? Why is it important to understand how they grade you? Because the way they grade you is what you need to write on. Simple logic, isn't it? Why would you write something that is irrelevant? Why would you write something that doesn't make sense? Task achievement, identify and report the key information. How do we report the key information? By reading the question carefully, all right? Coherence and cohesion. Please check picture one, which I'm gonna show you. Lexical resources. Lexical resource means vocabulary. Grammatical range and accuracy. So there are four points where they will grade you on. I'm gonna repeat this. There are four points that you need to look at. One, task achievement. Identify and report the key information. Coherence and cohesion. Many people miss out on this particular task and that's when the ban drop because they don't have this. They use a lot of high vocabulary, but they don't know what they're saying. Sometimes the vocabulary doesn't match the sentence. So be sure you know what you're writing and using the right vocabulary. Grammatical range and accuracy, this is common sense. You need to do that. Then look at the data you have to analyze carefully. The data is presented in a graph, bar, line, et cetera, pie chart, table, map, or process. You should be able to understand this by now. Think about the main trends and tendency. Everybody who's studying IELTS with any instructor, they will tell you this. Think about the main trends. Is it decreasing, increasing? 
Is it plunging? Is it what is the trend there? There is usually a comparison needed. Concentrate on that comparison because when you talk about pie chart or graph chart or any graph chart or any table, there is a comparison. Make sure you analyze that. Do not pay too much attention to details, not necessary. Don't overthink. Pay attention to the way the data is presented, numbers, percentage, direction, and so on. You're with me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Next, coherence. What does it mean? Coherence means structure. I like to ask you all, um, for those who know how to cook, or for those who knows how to drive a car, I'm not so sure how many of you know how to drive a car here or know how to cook here. Is it possible, I'm gonna talk about cooking. Is it possible to make tea without boiling water? Is no, ma'am. Is no. it possible to drive a car without starting it? No, ma'am. Okay, so we have to go step by step, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. So this step by step is coherence, all right? It's the structure. Introduction, paraphrase, restate the question. State your opinion in the introduction. Make it your thesis, okay? Paragraph structure one. This is elementary. This is what I teach um, 40, um, children at the age of seven, eight years old. I build them up and then so that when they go into high school, they'll be able to do it even better than me, okay? So this is something that we need to learn from young children or from a very young age. And we can also learn it from at the very, you know, whenever, it doesn't matter. But here, i like to ask you this. Listen to me. Paragraph structure. What do you put in a paragraph? Introduce the topic sentence. But the topic sentence must relate in the introduction. Okay? It, it must relate to the introduction. Argue, it could be an argument for, explain the idea. Give example of the idea. It can be a personal experience as well and conclude the idea. Paragraph one structure. Paragraph two structure is again, introduce the topic related to the introduction, okay? It could be argument against. So paragraph one is argument for. Paragraph two, is argument against. Explain the idea, example of the idea. It could be a personal experience and conclude the idea. Then we have the conclusion structure. Conclusion, conclusion structure means restate the thesis. The thesis is in the introduction. Summarize the essay give your opinion, recommendation, and prediction. This is coherence. Am I clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma okay, thank you. So, yes, keep, just do make notes so that I can answer any question after. So what happens with coherence? Now look at it, I said coherence and cohesion. So what is, now when we have this, how do we relate? Now remember, I told you, go back and make sure it relates to the introduction. So how do we join it? How do we connect it? Even a train track, when you have a train track, it, there is a connection, right? We have to put some kind of connection so the train can run. Without that connection, the train track doesn't, you know, it doesn't go smoothly, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we need a kind of glue. How do we glue the sentence? How do we do that? We do it to cohesion. Connecting the paragraph using linking verbs like however, 
On the other hand, for example, therefore, etc. How often do you use these words in a paragraph of 250 words? Do we put a lot of it? Answer, not like masala, but like salt and pepper. Don't put too much of masala in your writing, okay, please. I know we are Indians and we tend to do that, but let's not do that in this, okay? Let's be French and American. Let's just put a little bit of salt and pepper. Be careful not to overuse it or it will become too salty and bring the brand, the band down, okay? So we don't wanna do that, do we? Do we? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. All right, have a look at this. Coherence and cohesion. Is it clear? Is it visible? Can you see it? Is it better now? Yes, yes ma'am. Oh, okay. So here, what can you see? What is the difference between band five and band eight? Can anyone tell me? Anyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What is in, the difference? Ma'am, in band five, it is like a summary, the whole paragraph. But in band eight, it uh, like steps it. Jaise step dhane, ma'am, is me. I don't How understand do you... what you're saying. You have to say it in English. In band five, ma'am, it's like a whole summary of the paragraph. Mm-hmm. And in band eight, it's like steps for our uh -huh. progress and our writing. Yes. You see, so there was a big difference why we have band five and band eight. And it's in the coherence and cohesion. If you do not put it correctly and overdo it, then you drop on your grades. Okay. So try to keep it in a sequence information and ideas logically. This is chronological. Don't make tea without boiling the water first, okay? Manages all aspects of cohesion well. That means don't over add the masala. Make sure you have enough, but not too much. Using paragraphing and sufficiently, and using paragraphing sufficiently and approximately, okay? So we need to keep it very simple, all right? Here is an example. I'm not so sure if you can see it. All right, let's look at this. The graph below shows the regional household recycling rates in, U in the UK, France, and Germany from the year 2005 to 2015. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features, making comparison where relevant, write only 150 words. So here, I'm gonna show you how they did this, okay? Now yes. look, the graph, this is a graph, right? Yes. And they use the word illustrate the rates of recycling in the household of three different countries. Now look, regional household recycling rates, three different countries, you see that? Okay? Yes. The UK, France, and Germany from 2005 to 2050. Okay, 2005, 2015, correct? Yeah? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. The data shows that UK and Germany recycled the most, France recycled the least, and general uh, uh, recycles the least. Generally, this is the cohesion. Household recycling rates in the UK and Germany increased at similar rates, while France rates showed a steady decrease before rising again. Now look here, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, now look at this. Tell me from this first one, the data shows um, that the UK and Germany recycle the most, whatever, the sentence, this first line sentence, okay? all the way to um, the last sentence, while France rates showed a steady decrease before rising again. Is this written in an active or passive um, form of writing? Anyone? Active. 
Yes, it's written in an active. Is it in past tense or in present tense or in future tense? Present past. tense. Past tense, yeah, it's written in the past tense, okay? Then, of course, it's going to be past tense because it's 2005 to 2015. Now, look at this. In 2005, France had the highest household recycling rates with 50% of the household recycling. Now, look at it. Okay, so here, 50%. This is France. Okay, so you look at that. All right. So they use some of these numbers as well to explain it. Why didn't they talk about Germany much? Look, when did they talk about Germany? Okay, you see this whole paragraph in the paragraph one is rephrasing what is asked for. In the second sentence, they're just talking about the data and they talk about generally household um, recycling rates in UK and Gem Germany increase at similar rates, see? France and Germany, right? Yes. You see that? Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So, and then they talk about the percentage in the next paragraph, the different percentage. And the UC, 20, 2005, highest household, 50% of the household, and then decline steadily, 40% in 2015. And then UK and France started at 35 and 20. This word is good, respectively, in 25, okay? Both rose steadily. So these are the words they're looking for, rose steadily, because they see how you know how to use the adjective with the adverb and the noun. This is grammar. And then they see how you use in 2011, in 2011, not on 2011. They used the right grammar in 2011 and climbing to just above 60%. Germany, on the other hand, see that cohesion word on the other hand, showed a consistent increase from 20% in 25 in just below 60%. This is how they like to see these words. And then you, you conclude it with all three. It can be seen that UK has the highest rates of the household recycling of the three countries. With Germany, not far behind. France, although starting with the highest rate is now the lowest of the three. 150 words, is that difficult to do? No. no. Yeah, okay. Then example of writing two. Now you can check it out, okay? Um, I'm not gonna get into it because there are lots of lots of examples you can find in the, um, in the websites, on the websites and you know, in different um, places and all that. So here, this is what I would say to all my students. Practice once, practice twice. Practice thrice or more. If you still don't get it, practice again or for pre perfection, join the institution. Very simple. Because what happened is when you join the institution, you get to actually have someone monitor the style of writing and even, you know, help you get more tricks into it. Okay, so you could do that. Tips. Number one, read the question. Make sure you read the question. Make sure your handwriting is readable and not gibberish. Okay? Even if the R is spelled wrong or written wrong, they might mark you wrong because they can't read it. Timing. Make sure you manage your time right. Now, when I first asked you to write something on the chat, trust me, you took way too long just to write one sentence, way too long for those who wrote it. And for those who didn't, I don't know how you're gonna manage. You need to be more careful with timing. Number four, formal writing, please. Okay, this is very, very important. Make sure you have a formal writing. Um, why? Because it's a test after all, right? I mean, 
an informal writing, what happens is this, when you do an informal writing, you don't write in full sentences and then you miss out on the structure. So when I say formal writing, it helps you maintain that structure. And number five is something I've already explained to you, active voice over passive voice. This is also very important. Next, we do this, write in the way the examiner understand it, not the way you want it. This is a very common mistake we all make. We think that we need to understand it and that's enough. Look over to the chat again and see what you've written to me. Do you, you writing for yourself or are you writing for me to understand? Think about that. Number seven, organize the essay and write in full sentences. Don't cut it short because I won't understand what your thoughts are. Write in full sentences. Make sure that I understand it or the examiner understand it. You're not writing for me or you're not writing for yourself. You're writing so the examiner can give you the score. Number eight, do not repeat words too often. I'm very strict on this because repeating words in, let's say you have 150 words, only 150 words and you repeat and at least six times, what would happen to your essay? Think about that. Maintain a neutral tone while writing. When I say neutral tone, that means it should not be about I, 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 I. It has to be a very general tone. If you can do follow these tips and understand what I'm trying to say here, your writing, at least you would be getting a good ban, at least seven. I am so sure that you can score seven very easily, especially for Indians. I would say seven to seven, seven to eight, in fact, because your vocabulary is good. And the way you think and the way you do things, you can manage it pretty well. And for that, I would say I have given you the best of tips. Now, I would like to hear from you and tell me what you think about the presentation. And if you have any further questions, I'm open to discussions. Thank you. Anyone? And um, what level of vocabulary would you recommend for writing? I would say be comfortable with the vocabulary you use. Make sure it doesn't have to be very high. You can use a simple vocabulary, but if it suits the sentence, that's what they're looking for. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Of course, when you say vocabulary, I don't mean, you know, grade five vocabulary. I mean, I'm at least a high school level and higher, okay? Hello, ma'am. Hi. Uh, ma'am, it is generally fair. I can't understand. Can you repeat that, please? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, it is generally said that we should not uh, use memorized phrases and uh, sentences. So what sort of sentences they say that uh, we should not uh, write as it is? Uh, like there is, a, there, is, there is a penalty for uh, uh, memorization. It is mentioned on uh, official sheet. So uh, what does that mean? It means that you don't try to be more authentic in your writing. Be true to what you want to say. Don't memorize it, like don't copy because you see you're practicing, right? So many times, many people are practicing and they're copying, for example, like here, I gave you an example here, right? And I would say um, the highest household. Now you might be remembering this vocabulary as highest household, and then you just use it because you memorize it, you memorize it, you know? But does it make sense? Is this what you really uh, want to say? No, ma'am. Actually, uh, like we write, when we write a thesis statement in task two, then it is said, na, like, uh, like uh, if the question is, uh, write the advantages and disadvantages of something. 
XYZ. Uh, yeah. So we cannot write that uh, I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages in next fourth in forthcoming paragraphs. Like it is said that we should not use. So yeah. uh, if is this the thing uh, which they mean that uh, is memorized? Yeah, it's repeated. You see, you could use pros and cons. You get it? Um. Oh, okay, ma'am. Oh, you're okay, not sure. Thank you. Do you get it? Um, uh, ma'am, actually, um, I wanted to know that uh, one word is given on official sheet when we write in exam. Then in mm -hmm. task one and task two sh sheet, it is written that we get penalized if we use memorized words. Yeah, that's right. So, so I don't get it. That what is memorization in that? Because you're repeating the words. Remember, repeating, memorizing is the same as, as repeating the words. So try to be more authentic or use a different word instead of memorizing, using the same words. Okay, ma'am. You get it, what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah, yeah. I wish I could thank show you. you an example, but I don't, I don't know how to do that, so. It's okay, ma'am, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else have any questions? And what should be done uh, when we have a lack of ideas? What do you do when you have a lack of ideas? You before you um, the thing is try to stick to the topic and try uh, to come up with some creative ideas related to the topic. And if you practice enough, you won't be out of ideas. The most important thing is to practice. That's why I keep saying practice. So it will come to you. And the reason why you have lack of ideas is probably because you're not reading enough or you're reading to like, you're not expanding your concept or your idea. So when you open up to reading more and having more knowledge, you will never be out of ideas. So try to read more get more ideas, get more insight, listen to podcasts, listen to what people have to say, and you will have a lot of ideas. Okay. okay yeah. Any other questions? Anybody else? No? All right, so I would like to ask you to write to me one sentence, what you think of my presentation. I would like to see what you have to say about that. I'm giving you five minutes to write one sentence. Go ahead. Anybody? Okay, I'm waiting. I'll give you five minutes. So, and it's just not yet time, so it's okay. Okay, that's good. See, I would really like it if you could say it was really knowledgeable. The presentation is a was, is it the right word to use? Is it is a was, is it in the present tense or past tense? Keep writing so that I can see. So here I can see that still it's not in complete sentence and the structure is missing out on some things. Go ahead, you can write as much as, okay. Presentation was or is? And was. Uh huh. Correct. Okay. Again, here, complete sentence. When you start with most of the people, um, 
Okay, this is a good sentence, but structure requires um, Simran G. I really like you to read, do that again one more time and put the structure correct. Their leisure time with their families, but some of them remain indulged in their work. Com correct your sentences so that it will be. Very good. That is a clear sentence, um, Yash. Yash, can I call you Yash? That is correct oh, writing. Yes, that structure is correct. Okay. Thank you. As are most of as are most of the points rephrase that correctly. The structure is incorrect. A very knowledgeable presentation. Correct. Okay. So again, you're missing out on your structure. Even in one sentence, you're writing. Some of you are missing out on the structure. So this is what I mean by practicing complete sentences but it's at least it's so much better than the first um, time that you wrote to me. I really like the fact that you are making. <laughs> Thank you, Roshan, for that. Spend leisure time with their family while some of them remain indulged in their work. Much better, but spend leisure time with their family, spend leisure time with their family would be correct. Okay, I hope that helps you. Okay, so we still have a little bit of time. I would like you to write me one sentence based on um, how you like to improve. I'm giving you five minutes to write that. I wanna see if you could write it in complete sentences and good structure. Your time begins now. I'm still waiting. Come on, you guys, you gotta be faster. Very good, Yash, this is way better. And this is clear to me. And this is what will give you a high ban. Okay, and you got it. And if you keep writing this way, you will definitely get a very high score. Everybody else? Yes, practice makes you perfect. Yes, correct. Anybody else? You've got... Uh, Yang says, um, studies abroad, you don't need I'm or in, higher studies abroad rather than settling down within their own country. Complete the structure, make sure it's clear. Within their own country would be perfect. Anybody else would like to try? No? So 
So here I uh, thank you everybody for um, participating in the uh, in the writing. I'd just like to say that in writing, whenever you write, make sure you write in complete sentence whereby the, the person reading understands that that will help you uh, get a very high band and that will also help you think clearer. So here in the sentence, AK, um, it's too many words. Simplify it and make it into two sentences. It'll be easier for the, uh, um, you know, person to read it. <laughs> Ria, when will be the next session? I don't know, sweetie. It depends. <laughs> so AK, if you could do that in two sentences, it would be so much easier. Correct. The sentence, if you listen, yeah. If you listen, speak, and write a paragraph daily, then we will definitely be able to overcome our mistakes. Okay. Okay. All right. Would you like to try one more before we end the session? I'd like you to say goodbye to me um, in one sentence. Let's see how you do it this time. Make sure it's clear, okay? Go ahead. Good night, Yash. <laughs> Write anything. What do you think? Like say goodbye, good night, anything. I just want to see if you could write it in, in a clear sentence. That's all. Oh, you can even unmute and speak to me if you like. <laughs> My accent will haunt you in your dreams. I can't do anything about my accent. This is the way I'm taught in school. If it haunts you, well, too bad. <laughs> Anybody else would like to say good night to me? I will try to take your next session as well, AK. Yes, Roshan, see you soon. Thank you for being here and supporting me. <laughs> so have a happy sleep. We can't say have a happy sleep. Can you change that to something much, I mean, a, um, a clearer sentence? Have a safe, no, not a safe sleep. Use a different vocabulary. We can't say safe sleep. There has to be a different vocabulary than safe sleep. It doesn't match the sentence. That vocabulary doesn't match. No? Anybody else? Everybody, I would like to you to unmute and say good night. Uh, Ma'am, according to me, you have uh -huh. good experience about uh, writing and uh, you understand to everyone uh, very easily and good way. Uh, and uh, your tips help me and give in uh, when I mm, practice, uh, practice time and it is very success, uh, successful in my... Mm -hmm writing thank That's you very I'm much sure. thank you ma'am good night take care good night have a pleasant sleep okay bye bye good night anybody else would like to say oh you can prepare for the ielts exam with um 
love breed i think he's his institution um also has that um um you know i think you he has that space for you to even do the exams there so you can contact um love breed and she he will tell you exactly how to go about it okay Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everyone. I shall see you again soon. Thank you for having me. Thank you, ma'am.